morning, family. Uh, welcome to uh, our time together. I realize that some of you, it's not going to be morning when you're watching this. So uh, let me just say welcome to this time, this time of worship, this time of opening God's word, and uh, and hopefully being challenged and encouraged to follow after Jesus as his disciples. Uh, as we begin this morning, uh, today is our dedication time for our shoe boxes, uh, the, uh, the Operation Christmas Child. Uh, and I think we've gathered, uh, you know, I get numbers here and there, but I think we've gathered about a uh, 100 shoe boxes uh, between what's come into the church, what Karen Lewis uh, has done. I know she, over the course of the year, uh, has done, has done uh, I think about 84 shoe boxes. Uh, and then I know that several, uh, people have done shoe boxes uh, online and, and and I just want to say thank you uh, thank you for your heart thank you for engaging in that uh, you know it, it, it is a, a body wide I mean, big body right the, the the church across North America Canada different places around the world that gather the shoe boxes for them to go out uh, every year to different people uh, different kids and 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 many of those kids uh, are, are brought through a uh, discipleship course called The Greatest Journey. Uh, all because of shoe boxes, lives are changed for eternity. And so thank you for engaging in the shoe box opportunity. Uh, you have until uh, the 18th to bring uh, the boxes back to the church and we'll deliver those to the distribution center. Um, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to just have a time as we begin this morning to pray dedicate the shoe boxes that we have purchased as a church uh, to the Lord and, and for him to do uh, above and beyond what we can imagine could ever be done with a shoe box and a bunch of little gifts. Let's pray. Father, uh, we delight in you. We give you praise. We give thanksgiving to you. Lord, the ideas that come up of different ways that we can serve, that we can love the world around us, that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, shoe boxes with gifts in it is, is one way that has made a, a major impact uh, in different places throughout the world. And, and Lord, as people gather to uh, distribute these boxes, to pack these boxes, to ship these boxes, Lord, there's thousands of people that will be involved in a massive project. Lord, for those that have uh, taken the time and the effort, have spent the dollars to collect shoe boxes uh, to give away, Lord, I just thank you for them uh, and, and uh, what that represents. And Lord, as these go, we ask your blessing on the boxes that we have uh, purchased and put together and, and the boxes uh, that are going from all over the world. Uh, Lord, may they be gifts of eternal value. May they make eternal difference in the lives of children and families uh, around the world. Lord, may your name be glorified. And Father, this morning as we hear your word, may you challenge us. May you continue to call us as your disciples. And may you continue to transform who we are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Restored and forgiven by the love of my Lord I will sing for all of my days Never sees a new grace Holds me and your love surrounds me I belong to Jesus Yeah. 
passage of scripture for us this morning that I think really summarizes well the topic that we're looking at this morning, the habit of Bible reading and Bible study. I want to read to us from Psalm 19, starting at verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, they are than much pure gold. They're sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Think what a great perspective on what scripture is for us and in us. It transforms who we are. It gives us life. It gives us purpose. Uh, and it communicates God's thoughts to our spirit. Consider as we continue to worship the words of the Lord uh, and prepare our hearts this morning for what he has to say to us as he continues to challenge us, as he continues to invite us uh, to walk with him. The enemy says I'm done, I'll lift my praises. But my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship, I choose you now. Yeah, when the enemy says I'm done, I lift my praises. When my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship. I choose you now. Let's choose him, church. I choose to worship, I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds. Though my soul is unraveling, I choose you now. 
I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. I build my own right here and now and In the midst of the darkest night it won't burn out For you are perfect no matter what In the joy of the suffering I sing it loud I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. Let's choose it right here and right now when the enemy says we're done. When our world comes crashing down, we've still got a song to sing. In every season and circumstance, we have a song to sing. We won't let the enemy steal it. We won't let our circumstances steal it. He is still good when life is not. That's our proclamation. That's our declaration. Wherever we are, let's declare it together that we choose to worship right here and right now. When the enemy says I'm done, Welcome back to my office. Uh, it's a lot warmer in here than it was out there, so I, I'm enjoying that at least, uh, and not quite as noisy in here. I wonder, just a quick question for you, what is the closest that you have been to unimaginable wealth? Uh, I think for me, uh, I did a tour once of the Tower of London to see the, the English uh, crown jewels, uh, which are are stunning. Uh, they they really are. Uh, I, I have no idea how much they're worth. Um, would have loved to have uh, given one of those diamonds uh, to Christy, but uh, those guys are a lot faster than they look, and I'm I'm a lot slower than I feel. So I just decided to 
that that caution was was a little bit wiser there. Uh, there was a, a story of uh, a box that was shipped from England to South Africa, and the man that it was shipped to uh, refused to pay uh, the the charges for for the shipping, uh, not knowing what was in the box. Um, he he just refused uh, to take care of the cost of that. Uh, and the box sat in the post office for 14 years. Uh, it had different functions. It was a paperweight. It was a footstool. Uh, it, it was a dust collector. It, it just sat around. Uh, after 14 years, the man who it was for passed away. And the box went to auction. Uh, uh, a man was just curious as to what was in this box uh, and, and gave a low bid and, and won the box. Uh, and when the box was opened, it was full of English banknotes. It was full of money. Uh, thousands and thousands of dollars filled this box. Uh, I just think the, the the contrast is is striking, right? One one guy who just refused to pay for the box. He just had contempt for the box because he was going to have to pay uh, some minuscule amount of money uh, in postage fees to receive it. Uh, and one man who was just curious as to what was in the box uh, and and opening it. Uh, received a reward that was far and beyond what he ever could have uh, imagined f uh, for himself. I think that box is so much like the Bible. Uh, the Bible holds an unfathomable treasure with, within its pages. Um, and, and those that are willing to open it, to be open to it, uh, to read its pages, to spend time with it, uh, receive a reward that is from God, uh, his thoughts, his perspective, uh, his transforming power at work in our lives, uh, the, the portrayal of the story of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the values of the kingdom of God. Uh, it, it, it's, it's endless. Uh, and, and as we come to this morning and, and just exploring uh, the habit of Bible reading and study, this is one of the sermons I, I had mentioned I want to stay in the book of Luke uh, as much as I can, but this is one of the sermons where I'm going to leave the book of Luke. Uh, and I want to take a look at Paul and Timothy. Paul discipled and raised up Timothy, uh, who he had led to the Lord in the course of, of his ministry, uh, and and he's encouraging in this passage we're going to look at, he's encouraging Timothy to remain faithful uh, in his walk with the Lord, in his ministry that, uh, that he has followed uh, Paul uh, to take over. Uh, 2 Timothy's Paul's last letter before his death. Uh, and he encourages Timothy to, uh, to remain faithful to what he has been taught uh, and to read the scriptures uh, and to trust them for the training that it will give to him, uh, the scriptures that he's been familiar with since he was a child. Uh, the Bible teaches us God's way of living, corrects our way of living, and equips us for the work that God has for us to do. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, I want to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, and I'm going to start at verse 10 uh, as Paul's giving these final instructions to Timothy. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to read this morning from the NIV um, uh, where I've been teaching from the, the New Living Translation. Uh, this morning I'm going to teach from the uh, New International Version. So uh, if you want to follow along with me, starting at verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, 
persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconum, Lystra, uh, the persecutions that I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and impostors go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it. In other words, what Paul is saying is, Timothy, you know my life. You know my ministry. Uh, you, you know my, you know my story. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Timothy, to stay uh, grounded in the teaching that you've received from Paul and, and others and the Word of God. Uh, and he goes in verse 15, he says, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, I think as as we come to this passage of Scripture, uh, the Scripture describes itself as a seed. Uh, like you would plant in the, in the garden, right? Uh, it says, Paul says, um, that it, that it gives us wisdom, uh, makes us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, and in Luke, to go back to Luke, uh, in ver- chapter eight, verses four through eight, there's a parable, uh, there about, uh, a farmer who is sowing his seed. And, and the seed represents, uh, the word of God, uh, particularly, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. Uh, and, and it talks about as, as the, as the farmer spreads the seed, some of the seed falls on the path. Some of the seed falls on rocky ground. Some of the seed falls in amongst the thorns and the thistles. Uh, and some of the seed falls on uh, good soil where it grows up and produces a crop. I think that is a perfect picture of what happens as we uh, receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Uh, we receive the good news. We confess our sin. We surrender our lives to Jesus Christ and we follow after him as his disciples. There is this ongoing work of God in our lives and through our lives that produces fruit that we have no idea what that harvest looks like, nor will we have any kind of an idea of what that harvest looks like until uh, we get to eternity. And, and, and he gives us a perspective of how he used us and the fruit that our lives produced that brings glory to his name. I, I think that there's also uh, in in the parable, you know, some of the um, some of the seed falls in amongst the the thorns and the thistles, and I, I think we can relate uh, to that. Just uh, the distractions of life, right? The 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 struggle that we have to push through in order to uh, follow Jesus, in in order to grow in our relationship with Him. Uh, and, and the distractions that, that come through life. But if we're going to produce that harvest, uh, we need to, uh, we need to be that, that soil that is good and, and, um, nutritious and, and fruitful. Uh, and, and in fact, in Isaiah chapter 55, uh, it talks about how the Word of God produces uh, a fruitful harvest uh, in, in verses 10 and 11. It says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so, uh, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. 
It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Uh, and so God's word uh, produces in our lives this harvest that is the intention uh, of God for us. Uh, and, and just going back to the distractions uh, of life and, and the struggle that we have in, in making scripture reading, Bible study uh, a habit. Uh, life does get distracting. Uh, you know, we, we raise our families and our, and our children, uh, the hecticness, the busyness of work, um, not to mention crisis that comes into our life at, at different times. Um, there's things that we love to enjoy uh, and, and to take time for vacations and play and, and, and just the enjoyment of life. Uh, but if we're going to see the, the harvest of God in our lives, if we're going to grow and transform, I'll talk about that in a second, uh, we have to be in the Word. Last week, uh, I talked about the habit of silence and solitude, and, and that is the getting away uh, to just focus on our relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and really, the Bible is central within those times. As, as we are with Him, we're in the Word, uh, we're praying, uh, we're, we're spending time with with Jesus. Um, when we started the series, uh, the first habit that I looked at was the habit of worship. Uh, and, I, and I started there because uh, it's from worship that all of the habits flow. Uh, because worship, in essence, is saying yes to God. Yes, I'm going to follow you. Yes, uh, I'm going to worship you. Yes, I'm going to go and spend time with you. Yes, I'm going to uh, be in your word. I want to know your thoughts. I, I, I want to know your way. It, it's putting ourselves uh, second and surrendering to uh, the purposes of, of God in our life. Uh, and so Bible reading flows from, is an act of, of worship, but Bible reading is similar to worship in that uh, it's from the time that we spend in Scripture that our life begins to be shaped and formed uh, to a life that is the life of Jesus Christ, that is the life of, of kingdom citizens. Uh, and, and, and the other habits that we're going to continue to look at begin to be formed within our spending time in the Bible because God gives us his thoughts uh, in regards to... Uh, giving in regards to service and in regards to uh, evangelism and 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 all of the other habits that uh, that we're going to look at that all of a sudden are not in my head so um, there you go you got to bear with me uh, but it's it's in the word of God that that seed uh, takes root in our lives and begins to grow it begins to transform in us it begins to accomplish in our lives, the very purpose of God for us. And so scripture uh, is, uh, is like a seed. Uh, also, scripture is inspired by God. Uh, as we look in this, in this passage, let me turn back to it. Uh, in uh, verse 16, it's Paul saying to Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed. Uh, it, it, it's breathed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, is the, the one of the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who, uh, if I can say it this way, he oversees the Word of God. Um, the Holy Spirit led the prophets who wrote the various letters, uh, books of, of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, to write the things that God wanted to communicate through his people that he had chosen to communicate those things. Uh, and, and if you look, I'm not going to go there right now, but if you want to later in 2 Peter 1, uh, verses 20 uh, and 21, it, it says that, that the prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit to write uh, the scriptures that we have. And, and it took 
over uh, 1,500 years for the uh, for the entirety of what what we have as the Bible uh, to be uh, written and completed uh, over that span of time. Uh, the different people who wrote it, and and what's amazing with within that within the Word of God that that span of 1500 years uh, we, that, that we were able to gather the writings of God, there is a consistent thread and theme uh, or themes that run throughout the course of the Bible from beginning to end, even though it was written over that span of time by various uh, different prophets uh, and, and leaders that God had given, it holds the same theme, the same teaching uh, consistently throughout its pages. Uh, the Word of God is the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he inspired it, which is what we've just been talking about. Um, he's the keeper of the word. He inspired the people to write it, but he also keeps it together. And, and so when we look back over uh, all of the years, the, the bits and pieces of uh, uh, documents and uh, papers, um, papyrus is what I'm looking for, um, that, that have been found and collected the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, that, that were found, uh, in the caves there, uh, in, in Israel. Um, there, there is a consistency there over, over all of the years that those fragments of scripture have uh, been collected and found and discovered uh, over all of those years to bring us to today, there is the same wording, the same teaching, uh, the, the, the differences that we find in, in fragments of scripture from thousands of years ago uh, to what we have today, they're the same thing. Uh, and, and, and so it's the work of the Holy Spirit to keep those together. And as much as we, as much as it's a miracle that we have, uh, that there's been, uh, no difference, uh, essentially no difference in what we have today to, to what we, what was thousands of years ago, uh, it, it, it shouldn't surprise us because the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit who, uh, who worked in those people, uh, to, to keep the consistency of Scripture throughout the years. The Holy Spirit inspires Scripture. The Holy Spirit has kept the words of God um, the same and consistent over the decades and the centuries that we've had them. Uh, and, and then the Holy Spirit also uh, is responsible for il illumination. You know, if you kind of think of a picture of um, the light bulb going on over somebody's head, uh, when we read Scripture, this Holy Spirit works in us to illuminate, to, to cause us to have those aha, aha moments uh, as, we're, as we're reading the Bible. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with people who will say something like, um, you know, I, I just can't understand the Bible or, or I'm, not, I'm not smart enough to, to understand as, uh, what the Bible is, is saying. Uh, and, I, and I just... Uh, I, I just think that that's worded wrongly. The Holy Spirit works in all of us. And if we're willing to take the time to open the pages of Scripture, to read, to sit with the Holy Spirit as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will open our minds and our hearts to the things that God is saying to us. He will teach us what the Bible means. Even when we sit and we, we read a passage of Scripture, say, I have no idea. Um, as we take the time and we make the effort, as, as we gather people around us to help us with that, the Holy Spirit will open our minds to understand what the Bible has to say what it means. That's what Paul's telling Timothy here. Remain faithful in the things that you've learned and in the scriptures that you've known since your childhood because they will produce this harvest in us. Um, 
we uh, you you've probably heard us talk about this uh, before, but uh, in in Bible reading we encourage journaling. Uh, and, and journaling specifically using the acrostic soap. So as you read a passage uh, of scripture, like what we're looking at here, uh, the, the S stands for the scripture. And so you're just writing out what scripture are, we, are, are you reading? And, and so today would be 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17. Um, and then the O is the observation. And, and the observation is, is this. As you read the, the passage of Scripture that you're looking at, you're asking God, you're asking the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? And, and so as you read, it's, it's not a hard process. It's, it's just as you read the passage of Scripture, what catches your attention? What, what is it that you observe in the passage? Um, Maybe maybe it's the the fact that everyone wants uh, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ uh, will be persecuted. Maybe maybe that catches your attention because you're like oh, I, I don't want to be persecuted, uh, and and so there's an observation, uh, and and so then the application the A is the application, and in the application you're taking your observation and you're saying God what is it that you're saying to me, uh, and and so one of the things that uh, I always wrestle with with persecution is I, I, I don't want to go through persecution. I don't I don't want to experience that suffering and that pain. Uh, and, and, and as I've grappled with that with with God and, and again, as I was studying this week, uh, the Holy Spirit began asking me questions like, well, do do you trust me? Uh, do you believe that I'm going to look after you? Uh, and, and so with, within that observation, there is a question of faith. Do, uh, do I trust? Will I step into my faith in Jesus Christ? Whatever that persecution may or could look like, will I trust? Will I continue to follow, even though it's not something that uh, I, would, I would want to walk into? And, and so there's this conversation of faith and life uh, with the Holy Spirit as I read scripture. And then the P of soap is prayer. It's just praying it back. It's praying it back to God. It's, it, it, it's, it's expressing your inner thoughts uh, in prayer to, uh, to Jesus uh, and, and asking, and you know, maybe it's surrendering. God, I, I struggle to um, I, I do struggle to uh, to follow you when it's when it's hard. I, I like to protect myself uh, against pain, the pain that life brings, uh, and and so God, I just surrender uh, myself and my desire for self preservation or protection to you, and and help me to trust you uh, in the midst of these painful circumstances that that come into our lives uh and and it's we're, we're moving close to god one step at a time uh and as we continue to do that and make that a habit in our lives there's an intimacy there's a knowledge of each other my knowing god god knowing me uh just like any other friendship and relationship that that we would have, uh, and and we have at the at the office, we have the soap journals. Uh, they're put together and ready. If you would like a journal, you'd like to try it out. Uh, maybe you have one and you finished it, and you need another one. They're here at the office. Just ask for them. I think over the last three years, I've filled about six uh, six journals. So I don't always do it. Uh, but I often uh, will will journal using uh, using the soap. Um, and if you've got questions on on how to do that, uh, it's unfamiliar to you getting into the rhythm. I, I would love to teach you that. I'd love to help you with that. Uh, I'd love to disciple you uh, if you are interested. So just let me know. Uh, then, as as we keep going in this passage, I, I say Scripture is God's multi tool. Uh, you know, do you remember? Uh, when you were a kid, you know, Swiss Army knives. Uh, when I was a boy, uh, I, I couldn't tell you uh, how old I was at the time. Uh, we were still living in the Ottawa Valley, so I, I know the age range. Uh, but my mom and dad gave me a Swiss Army knife for my birthday. Uh, and and I, what, what greater treasure 
could uh, could a young boy have than his own Swiss Army knife, right? Uh, I, I I don't know if if you've had a Swiss Army knife. Uh, in fact, on my key ring uh, today, I have a small Swiss Army knife that just has you know the two little blades. Uh, but my my Swiss Army knife that I got when I was a kid, you know, I had the knife blades, I had the saw, I had the scissors. The leather punch, uh, I had the pull hook, uh, the, the screwdrivers that were part of it. It had a file, it had tweezers, it had toothpick. Uh, you can even, if you got a big enough Swiss Army knife, um, and, and I didn't get that, but, but you can get your spoon and a fork, magnifying glass, uh, a pen. I was looking at Swiss Army knives the other day, and you can even get them today that have USB sticks in the Army knife. That's genius. Uh, the, the Swiss Army knife is like the holy grail of the multi-tool uh, industry. You know, and, and there's some multi-tools out there that have tried to cut in on the Swiss Army knife, have tried to woo you away, you know, with, with pliers. Um, uh, or 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 some other implement flashlight or whatever that they, they have on there, but the Swiss Army knife is it, uh, and God's word is his multi-tool, his Swiss Army knife. Uh, it says in uh, in verse sixteen that uh, that all Scripture is God breathed. We've talked about that, and it's useful for teaching. Uh, it's useful for rebuking. It's useful for correcting and training in righteousness. So the scripture does all of these things. It teaches us God's ways, God's values, God's thoughts. Um, how does God feel about uh, money and making money? And uh, what does God say about our sexuality? And, and how, uh, we engage in, uh, in sex and, and what place it has in our life or our identity, um, our purpose for living, uh, who he is, who we are. All of these things are, are in scripture, uh, and, and a whole lot more, but it, but it teaches us God's perspective, God's values, God's ways. And if we're going to be men and women, uh, disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to know his ways. We need to be in his word. Uh, it says that it rebukes us, which, you know, none of us like to be rebuked, but where we're going off on a wrong tangent or a different direction than, than God, uh, than God has for us or that uh, goes away from God, as we come to Scripture, it confronts us. It confronts our beliefs. It confronts our value system. And it challenges us to come back towards God. It challenges us to change. We live in a day and age where we say, I'm going to do what I want to do. I, I have freedom to do that. And okay, fair enough. You, you, you have freedom to do whatever it is that you're going to do. But that doesn't mean that it's going to produce fruit in your life that is godly and righteous. It doesn't mean that it's going to lead you into greater relationship and into eternal relationship with God. If we are disciples of Jesus Christ, and we say that a disciple of Jesus Christ is someone who follows after Jesus Christ for the purpose of becoming just like him, we need to know his ways. and We need to be transformed. It rebukes us. It challenges us. It's hard sometimes to, to, to understand that, oh, maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. I need to correct my thinking and I need to follow after God. Uh, it rebukes us. It corrects us. It trains us in righteousness. Uh, you know, sometimes it's the screwdriver that God has to use. Sometimes it's the knife blade. He's got to cut something off of our life. Sometimes he's got to bring out the magnifying glass and find the minutia in our life that still needs to be transformed into his image. Uh, it, it is, scripture is his multi-tool for, uh, transforming his people into 
the image of Jesus Christ, uh, to live the values of the kingdom of God, to be holy and righteous men and women of God. And I think here is the treasure of Scripture. This is where the value of Scripture is. God's Word does does all of this, right? Um, to not read the Bible, to not read Scripture, to spend time in it, uh, is, is to miss out on the work that God has to do in our lives. It's to miss out on his transformation. It's to miss out on intimacy in our relationship with God. It's to miss out on, on discovering the values and wealth and importance of God's kingdom and what that means in our lives and how we bring that into the lives of other people. To not engage in the word of God uh, is like the man who refused to pay for that postage box um, that, that was full of money. Uh, it was used for a foot school, it was footstool. It was used for a paperweight. Uh, and, and yet in reality, it possessed within it the ability to transform that man's life with the thousands of dollars that were in it. We can have the Bible. It can sit around our homes. It can sit in our rooms, on our bedside tables, on the bookshelf. Uh, it can be used as a paperweight, it, it, right? It, but until we open it, until we take time with it, it's not going to transform who we are. It's not going to help us see the, the love of God for us, for humanity, his purpose, the big picture. It's not going to transform who we are. It's not going to heal the wounds that are in our life and the pains that have come. But the, when we open its pages and we spend time with the Holy Spirit there, all of this is what we experience his perspective, his healing, his touch, the wealth and the treasure of the scriptures come alive. And then uh, it is how God trains his people. Uh, it says uh, in uh, verse 17, it says, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, for life and for service. Uh, and it's interesting. I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but in Deuteronomy 17, Moses wrote instructions. There weren't kings at the time that Moses wrote this as the people were going into the promised land, but but he had anticipated, as, as the Holy Spirit directed him in writing his, the scripture, uh, anticipated kings leading and uh, guiding the nation of Israel in the future. And so there's instructions that are in the book of Deuteronomy for uh, kings. Uh, and it says that when a king, Deuteronomy 17 verses 18 and 19, when a king takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law taken from uh, that of the, Levi, uh, of the Levitical priests. Verse 19, it is to be with him. He is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees. In other words, the kings were to write out the law word for word in the presence of the Levitical priests. Maybe it was the Levites who were responsible for the, um, the writing out of scripture um, and making sure of its accuracy. Maybe, maybe they were given a copy, uh, but they were to read that every day. Uh, they, they were to spend time in it so that uh, they would learn to fear the Lord, to know the Lord. The fear of the Lord isn't a negative thing. The fear of the Lord is to be aware of how huge God is. And, and there is that, that aspect of, like, he could crush me in a second, that, that dread that he's going to judge us. He's going... And, and, and it keeps us accountable. But there's also that aspect of the fear of the Lord that is the awe. 
It's like he is huge. He is endless. Uh, he is all powerful. He's all knowing. It overwhelms us and it draws us in to him. Uh, and, and the fact that he is our rock, he is our fortress, he is our strength. Uh, all of that is about the fear of the Lord. And, and so the kings were to read the law to know God's mind and his thoughts, his values, the laws that they were to lead the people in so that they had the wisdom and the knowledge and the discernment to be able to lead God's people. Because we don't have the wisdom and the knowledge and the discernment by ourselves. It's only in the word of God. And, and, and so that same principle applies to us in our lives. If we want to live the life God has for us, if we want his wisdom, his knowledge, his discernment for the decisions and the requirements that are demanded in our daily lives, in our families, in the workplace, we need to be in his word so that we're living the values and the kingdom of Jesus Christ, of God the Father, uh, in our everyday life to gain his wisdom, his perspective. So as I close this morning, um, I do want to remind us of another resource that uh, we have available to us as a church body uh, for Bible study. Certainly, uh, our care groups are, are there for that purpose, to be in the Word together, to be praying together, to spend time together in community. I know that's been a struggle lately, but... But please don't allow the opportunity for our care groups to pass by you. They are essential for our community and for our, our, the health of uh, our spirit and, and our relationship with the Lord. Um, we also have an online uh, resource called Right Now Media. And, and everybody in the church uh, has access to that through a personal membership uh, through the church. Uh, some of you will remember that uh, and, and are making use of that. Some of you may have forgotten that. Um, maybe you've even forgotten your password for that. Uh, and, and we can help you with that if you want to uh, dust that off and, and start uh, or, or again start using that. Um, or maybe you haven't heard of Right Now Media and that you can have a membership. Um, but within Right Now Media, there are thousands of online Bible studies, uh, video-based, but also that use, uh, you know, various books uh, that we can read and write in and study, different books of the Bible, different themes, uh, all, all kinds of, of different aspects of our faith and our life with Christ. You can do it as a group. You can do the studies individually on your own, but it's there. It's a, it's a library of thousands of studies that is available to you on a daily basis. Uh, and if you haven't gotten a membership through the church uh, and you're part of Madison Community Church, call the office, let us know, um, and we'll get you set up with that. It's an incredible, incredible resource. Family, I can't stress enough the value and the importance of spending time reading the Bible, uh, of studying its pages. Uh, don't just open the Bible, read it for five minutes, put it away and say, well, you know, I spend time reading the Bible, but God never speaks to me. He's not going to speak to you uh, unless you're in the Bible and you're asking, God, what are you saying to me? Uh, you're, you're reading what the word is. You're studying what it contains. Uh, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to just become part of us through osmosis, uh, as we, as we hold it. It takes the habit of spending time in its pages, understanding what it says, and the Holy Spirit will cause us to understand uh, as we make that effort. Uh, I want to close this morning uh, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I want to challenge us with the words that God gave to Joshua as he was leading the people into the promised land. And he said in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Keep this book of the law always on your lips, Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do 
everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And please understand, when it talks about being prosperous and successful, it's not talking about you having all kinds of money and being successful in all of these aspects of, of life and wealth and, and business. And We're going to be prosperous and successful in following after Jesus Christ, in pleasing God the Father, and, and living our lives as kingdom citizens, bringing glory to God the Father. May that be our desire and our longing in the course of our life throughout the days that we're given to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Family, be challenged, be encouraged, and all family, be blessed. Long preserved for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart words of life, words of hope, they give us strength, help us. In this world, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with all. Sacrifice, oh, heed the faithful.